Bonjour, people. Hope you are well. How are you? It's been a long time. Um, sorry about that. If you, if you missed me. <laughs> um, but it's not always easy for me to get in front of the phone. And in many ways, it's true. And um, I don't plan what I'm going to say, honestly. And I feel I should, but um, so far it hasn't. No, it, I have done it before and I felt more organized, but um, today I have one idea in my head, two ideas actually. I wanted to speak about when we have disagreements with somebody and how we should consider the Neville Goddard way of dealing with a disagreement. And I would like to preface this with a disclaimer that I don't actually know what Neville Goddard thought about that. But I'm imagining and I believe he would think this. <laughs> so, and you know it anyway, it's obvious if you're into Neville Goddard, but I just thought it'd be good to talk about it with people who understand, or two people that understand. Um, so I was thinking about it because there was a disagreement between somebody I know from the cathedral. He's a reader there, and I'm a reader. And it's the lady who organizes our timetables, the volunteer coordinator. And they um, didn't see eye to eye on something. And it continued for a while. And I really like him, so I know his side. And I really like her, and I know how she is as a person. And I could just see that they just had two different opinions on it. And I had no opinion on it, really. I was in the middle. So I could see more clearly, um, yeah, I, I, I understand your point of view. And then she's seen it totally differently, and I get her point of view. And this is what happens in life, isn't it? When somebody's telling you a problem. Maybe sometimes you feel that you should um, side with them because they're your friend. But it's more about support, isn't it? It's more about um, listening and understanding without judgment. That's what I'm getting to. The judgment doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve them, even though you know, it might feel like a really nice, friendly thing to do. Um, it's not the truth, and we want to be following the truth. So I heard him on Sunday, and um, he was very nice to me, and he, he actually said that he um, used to work for British Airways, and he got tickets reduced 25% off, which is... Yeah, it's some saving, it's not massive, but it's some. And he said, if you want to go anywhere, you can have, you know, the 25% off. So I was like, oh, thank you very much. Because any saving is good, isn't it? Um, if anyone's listening to this and they're outside of Europe and they don't really know the cost, if I go British Airways from London to really anywhere in Europe, as long as I book well in advance and get the cheapest ticket, I can get maximum um, 75 pounds one way to a destination in Europe. Um, that doesn't sound like a very good deal. <laughs> I don't pay more than 100 pounds return usually. So that sounds much better. That's 150 US dollars. So. I always try and keep it below the £100 mark, sometimes 80 Um You can even get to the south of France £50 return in advance. So it is quite cheap, so 25% is not such a big deal, but it's a nice gesture. And then I was thinking, well, maybe I'll want to go to America in a few years, you know, who knows, even though it's expensive, but that's actually 
that would be a substantial saving to go to America if it costs five to six hundred to get there and back. That's over a hundred pounds savings. So I thought that's really good. So I didn't have any reason to um, support the other side. That's what I'm trying to say. I was on his side, you know, um, not really, not against him. I was listening to him and understanding, but it was like he gave me a, something kind. And so I felt maybe I should just be supporting him and it didn't feel right. So when I got home, I sent him an email or the next day, um, just to thank him for his kind offer. And then to say in a few sentences that I could see both points of view. And that's all I thought it was. It was a misunderstanding. He was thinking this and she was thinking that. And, and then I was just quite general about it, saying this happens all the time in life. And um, I just thought, say it as it is, and he'll realize that, and he'll come back and say, yeah, yeah, you're right. He hasn't replied yet, and he usually replies straight away. So hopefully I didn't offend him in any way. But the same things happened to me recently. I um, have a friend who lives in another country and, you know, so we're not seeing each other in person, but we're in touch. We were in touch by phone quite regularly and sending text messages. And I've known him for many years since, I don't know, God, it goes way back, early 20s. So that's a long time ago. Um, and then a few things happened recently, which made me feel um, he was a bit thoughtless and I suppose not treating me with respect like cutting me off in a phone call to speak to somebody else another woman um, we're friends and um, not saying goodbye just Dong, and you're gone and then god I don't know if I should be saying all this stuff you know but I just want to give you an example so you know what I mean um, and I'm sorry if I'm boring you so it was his birthday. I found out his birthday date from Facebook and um, I made him this card and it was really funny, I thought. I um, photocopied lots of, printed out lots of photos of him and made a little collage. And um, it was, there were pictures of where we met in San Francisco over 20 years ago. So it was like, took me over two hours um, at work <laughs> and um, I should have been working and I had to do the work at another time obviously but it was really important to me to um, just make him laugh and make him think wow this is you know really great she's taken a lot of time over this um so anyway the card got lost in the post how annoying is that <laughs> two hours and um, it wasn't just the time I just really loved that card and I wanted him to love it too so it didn't get there for his birthday didn't get there the week after didn't get there you know a month or two after and I thought it's gone hey, it's gone. so um, I I'll speak a bit quiet I um, felt a bit shit about that and it was just never spoke about it to him, but I just felt, what's the point in doing something for somebody when it's just gonna get lost? You know, it just feels like such a waste and I didn't want to do it again, but I felt I'm gonna have to do it again at some point. Anyway, um, it finally came like ages after and he sent me a text saying he really liked it and everything. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to put this clip on YouTube because it's... <laughs> I've started now, so... Um, where was I up to? Okay, so he really liked it, sent a text, and then... Um, what happened? Oh yeah, by that time, it had been my birthday. And 
I didn't want to say, oh, by the way, it's my birthday on this date. I kind of hoped he would do the same kind of thing for me. You know, and you don't expect it. But just, you know, if it was me and somebody, and that's the big problem, isn't it? You think, if it was me, I would do that. And then they haven't done what you would do. So they're bad. Um, and you feel let down and disappointed. But the truth there is that they are a different person. So shouldn't have these expectations. And yet I come back to it thinking, but it's thoughtful. I was thoughtful. So, um, and I really wanted to say uh, beforehand, it's my birthday and he probably would have then. I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't. So, um, he didn't find out my birthday on Facebook and and then the time went by. No, sorry, I, I'm getting all muddled now. I told him it's my birthday tomorrow and he sent me a message saying happy birthday. Um, I tried to call on my birthday, but I was out with my parents. So he wasn't unthoughtful, but I didn't like it that he had not as a Heathrow plane going over now because I'm near Heathrow Airport. Um, yeah, I just felt a bit thoughtless. And what about my card? When are you going to tell me on the phone what you think? <laughs> then it, my parents left. It was a few days later and I was watching the Eurovision Song Contest and it was I was enjoying it, you know, but then the English one came on and um, the one for Great Britain. And I thought, this is rubbish, you know, I might as well call him. And so I did. And he was talking for a long time, getting very worked up about one particular subject, which I won't mention. And it really bothers him. And by the end of the phone call, I had a headache and I was fed up of it. You know, in the beginning, I was listening and understanding him and all that. But by the end, it was just a rant and every other word was effing this, effing that. And I thought, God, this has been going on for about two hours. And I, I want to watch the Eurovision Song Contest now. You know, why did I turn that off? And it's just been my birthday and I'm hearing this, you know, he hasn't asked me anything about that. And so he said, oh, all right, another great conversation. Um, and we said goodbye. And afterwards, I just felt like, God, could you have just said, how was your birthday or just something, you know? It was a big one, It was I was 50, so. I, and I felt a bit down, maybe it was because I was 50, but my parents had left and I was all alone, you know. So I really needed to talk a bit and instead I had to be the listener again and blah, blah, blah. So um, the next day I just felt pissed off and angry with him. And I just sent him a message saying, why didn't you ask me about my birthday? It wasn't anything horrible, but it was just to the point, you know, a question. And he wrote back, you know, a nice email, a nice text message saying, oh, sorry, um, yeah, I didn't think, and we can talk about it in the next phone call, something like that. And I just thought, fine, okay. And I just felt really angry, and I thought, well, let's wait for the phone call then. And it never came. So three months later, um, now, this week, I decided this is stupid because we've been friends for a long time. I'm going to get in touch. And um, I didn't know what to write, you know, because it had been so long and I don't want to start justifying why it, I haven't been in touch because I, I felt that he said he was going to get in touch and all this so i just wrote hi how are you um hope you're well and i sent him some funny clips and um 
he hasn't replied yet and usually he replies straight away and it's been a few days and I think he's not going to reply he's pissed off with me and he's got a totally different angle on it you know he probably um, this is another thing we do we try and second guess what the other person thinks <laughs> so I'm going to do it anyway um, I think that he probably thinks that I've been overly sensitive and um, I've been thinking, um, I, I got worked up, not angry, but you know, I didn't like it that he put the phone down on me and I didn't like it that he um, didn't bother to find out when my birthday was and didn't ask me about my birthday two things and um well three things actually because he said he'd call and he didn't and um if you're siding with me at the moment don't side with me because he's got a completely different view and if you heard him maybe you'd agree with him but the truth is we have different views because we're different people that's what i'm getting to and um yeah, I just thought, what's the best way to deal with this? Do I just um, drop it and think, well, you know, I try to get in touch, you know, and I feel really righteous, smug, righteous in that way. Um, or do I keep going, trying to communicate with somebody who clearly doesn't want to communicate with me? Um, or do I imagine? See, that's a good one, isn't it? I'll get onto that in a moment. But, yeah, what's I going to say? Um, I wanted to feel angry and I felt um, hurt again that he hadn't just appreciated that I'd made the first move to get in touch and he got in touch with me and I thought is he going to hold a grudge against me and just for some reason that I'll never know and yeah um it felt I felt like I wanted to just think bad things about him and keep justifying why I was right and he was wrong. And I came to the conclusion that whenever this happens, I need to, as soon as I'm able to, get myself on the straight and narrow, the truth, and tell myself that every human being is completely different. There are no two human beings that think exactly the same. And we've all got our different experiences and, well, our environment, everything that's made us who we are. And that has a massive effect on how we behave, it's everything. So sometimes we're going to have a bit of friction and disagree. So how do we deal with that? It's got to be from another plane, a really open perspective where when the anger or strong feelings have gone down, if there were any, you can, one of you goes first and you explain how you feel, um, why you behaved as you did, and they promise to listen and understand as far as they're able. And, and speak that, just say, I, you know, I understand why you did that because you felt like that. And, and if they want to say sorry for anything, any way they've behaved, then say sorry, but they don't have to. The most important thing is the understanding. And then the other person says, you know, what they think, you know, I understand this, but the reason why I did this was because I was feeling like this, because you did that. And that made me feel really, mm. And the other person listens, mm, mm, mm. Okay, now I get why you did that. 
maybe you don't agree with it, but you understand. And that um, like diffuses the difficult emotions. And you can, you know, maybe neither of you want to say sorry, um, but if both of you understand the other person's point of view and maybe you come to a conclusion and you can say, well, the next time we could try this or I could do this differently so it wouldn't hurt you or whatever. Okay, so, you know, I probably said the obvious again, but um, if you're anything like me or the average person, sometimes people really get you wound up because they, um, they just say something that hurts you or offends you. They, you know, push your buttons, as they say. And we've all got that possibility in us to get worked up about at one particular subject or more. So, the best thing to do is when that happens is um, take a few deep breaths and stay calm. If you're going to talk about it, just say how you feel and or remove yourself from the situation. And the thing is with this theory of mine of how to deal with difficult situations, not everybody is open. So what if you're feeling very open and you want to discuss it and the other person takes that as you admitting that you're wrong. That's not going to make you feel very good and it's not going to encourage you to be open from now on. So it only works with people who are a bit enlightened, you could say, who want to, who can see it's the only way forward. Understanding and openness. Um, so I thought, well, it might, maybe this case it's not possible, but it's made me think about a possible way forward, the only way forward I can see. Oh no, it's not the only way, sorry. That's the um, objective reality way, if we can divide things into subjective and objective. Um, but of course, they're always um, connected. So that's, you know, really good way of taking things forward with talking. Of course, the most important thing is the imagination. So we have to imagine a good scenario with the person we've disagreed with. We have to see ourselves getting on with them and working things out and just keep imagining that maybe before we attempt conversation and then you've got the best of both worlds you know you you're imagining that you get on really well so it will happen and then you are um, putting good communication into place and learning how to get along when you disagree so yeah that's what I think and um, I've just spent 23, almost 24 minutes rabbiting on about a small disagreement. So sorry if that bored you, but I guess you just turned off anyway. But what do you think about that? Um, people, however much they understand Neville Goddard, people do get worked up from time to time or just wall out with each other. And maybe there's no disagreement. You're just offended by something they said or upset. So you just don't get in touch anymore and and they don't know. And that's up to you. That's your prerogative. But um, it would be good if we communicated more. And we tried to understand the other point of view more. So um, I am um, improving though. I, I used to... Well, I did the same thing here, really. Um, I used to just back off and that was it at the end of a friendship. And I will still do that if I think there's, um, it's not, 
sounds really harsh, but a friendship worth saving. But, yeah, I felt in this case, this is, this is a waste. And yet I haven't really communicated yet. I just needed to break through and say hello. And uh, yeah, we see what happens. So I think that's the Neville Goddard way of um, dealing with disagreements. You use your imagination to make sure, if, if it's already happened, to imagine that you're friends again and you listen and un understand. Um, and hopefully you do that in the first place so that it doesn't become a disagreement but and you show love to that person and then in the understanding so that you don't get worked up and hopefully they don't and the last thing is you remember it's objective reality so give it a light touch knowing that it's already been imagined um, don't see it as so solidly real and not to make light of the other person's view but try to use it to not um, lose control of your emotions I suppose anyway um, I hope that was useful and I'm going to do one now where I refer to the book because I, I went off a bit there and um, yeah, speak to you in a moment again. Bye.